What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna finally review the Hegel H190 integrated amplifier. Um, I've had this bad boy for a few months. I've used it in all my recent speaker reviews as one of my reference points. It's been a fantastic and very competent performer. And today it's time it gets its own review. So before I jump into that though, I do wanna mention one thing. Uh, I wanna give you guys one reason why Hegel as a brand just deserves everyone's respect. And I mean everyone. So for a while now, I've seen a lot of people complain about all the recent price hikes, myself included. I'm not happy with a lot of these price increases we've seen in the industry. And we all know they're because of supply chain issues caused by the pandemic and stuff like that. And I, I've seen a lot of people say stuff like the unfortunate part is even when these companies do get their supply chain in order, no one's going to give up profits and roll back the price to what it used to be, right? And, and we all accepted that. We, we all understood from a business aspect, everyone's just going to leave their prices at the new higher price point. Not Hagel. No, sir. Not Hagel. Um, before I filmed this video about a couple of weeks ago, they emailed me and they said, hey, good news. Uh, everything's been resolved as far as supply chain issues go and things like that. And we are in a place where we are able to roll back the price of our amplifiers to what they used to be. So, you know, up until recently, the Hegel H190 for uh, I think a couple of years now has, has been selling for 4350 Before the pandemic, it was 3900 and they have rolled back the price to 3900 And I, I thought that was very respectable. I'd love to see that from some other companies. There, there's, I'm not gonna talk about other companies in this video, but I know for a fact there's some giant companies out there that have had their supply chain in order and refuse to adjust their prices back down. So to see Hegel do it, good job. My hat's off to you. Guys, this is a company that cares about the consumer and I respect the hell out of that. So let's talk about this amplifier and get this review going. I'll throw the main specs on screen so you guys can check that out. I'll tell you about some specs and standout features, what the amplifier sounds like, how it compares to other amplifiers in and around this price point, and then we'll wrap up the video. So standout features first, Hegel goes for an understated look. They want this amplifier to be the centerpiece in your system uh, that is not too overly complicated. This is not for someone that wants a multi-box solution. This is for someone that might be putting their amplifier perhaps in a dedicated space that they wanna keep neat and tidy or in, in a room that is a shared space where you don't want a whole stack of equipment like I have here myself personally. So the looks are understated. You've got a high wife acceptance factor, but the build quality is still very nice. You got a good thick front panel here, an OLED screen around back, Let's talk about your inputs and outputs. In my opinion, the Hegel H190 is essentially a modern take on a purist piece. Usually purist amplifiers are sound quality first amplifiers. They don't have any features, they're bare bones, and they give you the best sound quality for the money. That's essentially what the Hegel is, except they gave us a couple of features that most purist pieces don't have. For example, you got an ethernet port. What's that for? You could stream to this thing. You wanna stream Tidal to it? No problem, you could do that and it sounds fantastic. Now, for a second I thought it might have its own app and I emailed Hagel, I said, hey, is there an app to download? They said, nope. You could stream straight to it uh, using Tidal or, or a number of other music services and it works fantastically well, guys, love it. Um, you also have a bunch of digital uh, inputs. You got three optical, you got your coax, you got your USB, you have XLR inputs, you have fixed or variable outputs so you could run a single or dual subwoofers, you have home theater bypass, and a very unique feature and one they didn't have to do. And again, this tells me they probably got some emails from some customers and they implemented this update to accommodate this small group of people. So most people, if you're gonna use this, let's say in a shared space, it's the centerpiece for your stereo, but you're like, you know what, I wanna use it for my TV also. You're probably gonna run something like a headphone output to dual RCAs into your amp so you could you know, still use your um, TV remote to control the volume and everything, right? Some TVs, they only have optical out, and if a TV only has optical out, usually you, once you connect an amplifier, with that optical cable, the TV remote no longer works. So you gotta use the TV remote to turn on the TV, then you gotta grab the amplifier's remote to adjust the volume, and you gotta dual wield, and it's frustrating. People hate that. That's why a lot of people want HDMI ARC. So Hegel introduced an update that allows you to program the amplifier to respond to your TV's remote control when using that optical cable. It's genius, it works very well. Now the only thing I will say is some TVs, 
It's not very common, but some TVs like this one right here, which is a Sony X950G, the remote control uses Bluetooth, so that's not gonna work. But for other TVs, something like a LG C1, like the one I have upstairs, that uses your typical IR, IR remote. And I was able to program that to adjust the volume on the Hagel. So using optical out from the TV into the amplifier, I was able to use a single remote solution and I love that. Another unique feature, sorry guys, I'll tell you how it sounds like in just a second. They were just able to jam pack a lot of unique features into this amp that I really loved. The last one and possibly my favorite, you can program um, a vault like max volume, right? So in case you have like kids and you're worried they're gonna play your stereo while you're not home and they're gonna crank it too loud, you can set a max volume. You can also set what volume it sets to when you turn it on. And I really like that because sometimes I'll jam out a little bit louder and I'll just turn off the amp or I'll just walk away and because I have the screen off usually. Usually I dim the screen all the way down to the point it's off. Unless you're making adjustments, then it turns back on. And I'll come back down here and I'll play a track and I'm like, oh crap, it was way louder than I expected, right? With the Hagel, I have this one set up. If you turn it off and you turn it back on, every single time, the volume goes to 30. Every time. And 30 is like pretty, pretty quiet, right? But loud enough that you know it's on. And then from there, I can adjust my volume. I really like that. So again, a modern take on a purist piece. You've got a lot of cool features, features they didn't even really have to include. I don't think these are features that would be deal breakers if the amp didn't have these features, but you could tell like these guys, they're audio files too and they really think of the consumer and they try to create this product that can just truly be the centerpiece of your system and you don't need anything else but a pair of speakers and it works really, really well. But let me tell you what it sounds like because if it doesn't sound any good, who cares, right? So starting with the top end, we have a top end that is mostly neutral, right? It's not gonna be super energetic and forward nor is it dark and recessed, it is just ever so slightly smooth. So if you've got sharper sounding speakers like Focal, for example, it's gonna take just the slightest edge off, which is very welcome in some situations. When using my Focal Cancer, for example, the Hagel H190 is the amplifier I preferred over everything else I have here. The Focal Cancer number one is not aggressively bright by any means, but that beryllium tweeter around the one hour mark strains the ears just a little bit. I start to feel a little bit fatigued. With the Hagel H190, I was able to listen to that Focal Canton number one, and I never ran into that fatigue. I didn't lose any clarity, I, I didn't lose any sparkle, I didn't lose any precision. It just took away a little bit of that sharp attack just enough to, to just let me enjoy that speaker a little bit longer. So, very nice top end. Uh, the top end is, uh, it is very open though, it is very airy, good clarity and all those things, right? Don't don't think just because it's neutral, it doesn't have really good high quality treble. It absolutely has very nice high quality treble that is very refined. Again, just ever so slightly erring on the smoother side. Moving down to the mid-range, we have a mid-range that is mostly neutral. Guys, from top to bottom, this amp is mostly agreeable. It's voiced in a way that most people are gonna like it, right? Now, if you're looking for a ton of flavor, right? You might not. Because again, this amp is mostly neutral. The goal is for it to be mostly agreeable, something most people are gonna like. There was nothing in my, in my listening that I didn't like, right? I have no complaints about this amp. My guess is most people that hear a Hagel won't really have any complaints because it's a very agreeable piece. Back to the mid-range. Mostly neutral, good sense of realism. Male and female vo vocalists uh, projected into the room nicely, had a good sense of air, space, and separation around them. It sounded natural, it sounded organic. It didn't air super warm and rich, nor was it cool, dry, and lean. Mostly neutral with a good sense of realism. Moving down to the bass, the Hegel has good strong bass. It's not overblown or exaggerated in any way, but it is very confident and it reminds you the amp certainly does have 150 watts per channel at eight ohms. So from top to bottom, treble, mid-range bass, good, clean, sound, mostly neutral. So if what you're looking for is a high quality amplifier with a good feature set, that's gonna serve as the centerpiece for your music system, and even maybe play some TV duty or get mixed into a home theater using that home theater bypass function, the Hagel H190 is high quality amplification. That's what it is at the end of the day, right? How does it compare to some other amplifiers in and around this price point? Let's jump into it. So let's first talk about how it compares to something a little bit more affordable, right? Uh, the Bucart i150, that's 2,500 bucks. The Hagel is 3,900. We got a big price difference here, so stay with me. 
The Bucart i150 is more of a full featured integrated amplifier. Every feature under the sun you can imagine it has. You know, it has room correction built in. It has tone controls built in, rather advanced tone control options too. You got your graphs and all these things you could adjust. You can, you know, adjust the subwoofer phase from, from a cell phone app and full featured integrated amp, right? It is class D, the Hegel is AB. The Hegel treble is gonna be a little bit more refined. The Bucard i150 is a very good performer at $2,500, don't get me wrong, but the Hegel H190's treble is more refined. It's cleaner, it's clearer, it's easier on the ears at the same time, it's simply better. Moving down to the mid-range, the Bucard i150 being a Class D amp, it's gonna lean ever so slightly on the cool side of things, so sometimes it could sound a little bit thin. The Hegel H190 does not do that, it has the better mid-range as well. Moving down to the bass, I'll be honest, both amplifiers are very competent performers in the bass region. I didn't notice a difference between the two. So overall, as you would expect, the more expensive Hegel does have the better sound than the Bucart i150. And again, you know, it's over $1,000 more. That's no surprise there. Let's compare it to something closer in price, but a very different design, the Thomason Stereo Galleon TS120 SE amplifier. That's $4,500. The Hegel's $3,900, so the Hegel is about $600 cheaper. So these two amps couldn't be more different. The Thomson Stereo uh, Galleon TS120 SE is a tube amplifier, right, first and foremost, where the Hegel is a solid state class AB amplifier. But let me tell you what the differences are overall in sound. Despite being a tube amplifier, the treble on the Galleon TS120 SE is much more forward than it is on the Hegel. The TS120 SE is much sharper with its treble attack, where the Hegel H190 is going to be a little bit smoother, so the top ends almost could not be more different. Moving down in the mid-range, being a tube amp versus a solid state, again, the sound is totally different. The Hegel is for someone that's looking for neutrality. Um, the Galleon TS120 SE is for someone that's looking for some flavor. You want that bloom, that tonal richness, that warmth in the mid-range. The Galleon is going to give that to you. The Hegel is only going to give that to you if that's how the recording sounds. Or if maybe you have some very openly warm speakers, it's not going to inject that into the mid-range. Again, it's mostly going to give you clean, clear, and natural sounding mid-range. Moving down to the bass, both amplifiers, again, very competent performers. The Galleon is a little bit bass boosted in the lower frequencies, so the bass did sound fuller and stronger, but it's not linear, right? It's tuned that way. The Hegel, a little bit more linear with its bass. Again, it's not boosted in any way. It's not exaggerated. The Hegel is designed to be mostly linear, mostly natural, mostly organic. The Thomson Stereo TS120 SE has flavor. It's tuned to sound a certain way. So my advice here is if you're looking for that sound that is more flavorful, then you're gonna go for something like the Galleon or another tube amplifier perhaps. But if you want that more neutral sound and perhaps the features that the H190 has, then you would go for the Hegel. Personally, I like both amplifiers a lot. Um, I'm happy I don't have to choose between the two because that would be tough. Though I think with the sounds being so different, I think it will be easy for most people. And again, also the features. Some of you guys are really gonna want these features. Let's go up in price a little more. How does the Hegel H190 sound compared to my preamp and monoblocks um, by Kinky Studio? My EXP7 preamp is $2,200. My EXP7 monoblocks are 37. What is that, like $6,000 compared to 3,900. Big difference in price. This is my Kinky preamp down here. My monoblocks are below it. Obviously, my monoblocks are gonna have more power, 250 watts a channel versus the Hegel's 150 watts a channel at eight ohms. Um, the sound is, again, also slightly different. So the Kinky Studio setup at $6,000, the top end is gonna be a little bit sharper, where the top end of the Hegel is gonna be just a little bit smoother. Both are mostly neutral with the treble quantity. Neither is gonna be overly bright or energetic. Neither one is gonna be on the darker side. Their treble quantity, mostly neutral. Kinky Studio, a little bit sharper. Hegel, a little bit smoother. Moving down to the mid-range, the Kinky Studio mid-range is actually a little bit on the cool side of neutral. The Hegel H190 is more on the neutral side, uh, so it's a little bit more natural sounding. So despite being quite a bit more affordable, the mid-range is better on the Hegel H190 than on my $6,000 Kinky Studio separates. Moving down to the bass, uh, again, look, both amplifiers had very good, strong, competent bass. 
I could not hear a difference one way or another between the two. The Kinky Studio bass is strong, it's confident, it's well controlled. Hegel's bass, again, strong, confident, well controlled. So no complaints there. That I think might be it for the comparisons. I'm trying to think if there's any other amplifiers I'd want to compare it to. That's it. I think that brings us pretty close to wrapping up this video, guys. Um, this is a great performer. I can't believe they rolled the price back down to 3,900. Very respectable. Its feature set is awesome. You could do a lot of unique things. Again, my favorite being able to set the uh, volume that it uh, stays at when you turn it back on. I thought that was great. Uh, also the max volume home theater bypass, being able to stream to it, being able to run single or dual subwoofer outputs. Very nice, very nice. Yeah. I think that wraps it up, guys. If you have any questions, this YouTube channel does have a free Discord. Link is in the description and probably on the screen if I edited this properly. If you do join my free Discord, I ask, please be friendly, right? Uh, be a brother to your audio brothers. Don't be rude, don't be snooty, right? We're here for a good time. This is a hobby, it's supposed to be fun, guys. Don't forget that. Sometimes I think us audiophiles, we get a little bit too uptight with things. It's supposed to be fun, relax, take it easy, right? Um, you can also ask your questions in the comments section below. And uh, yeah, that wraps it up, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time, later.